What's up guys, forgive me, I am about to do a crypto update. My laptop is all set up there in the background, but I have had the worst night's sleep. So this is gonna be a super fast one. Before we get into it, I just wanna show you, I have just moved to a new apartment in Dubai and I wanna share it with you. So let's do that first and then we're gonna get into the crypto price action. <music> my friends let's talk about bitcoin it was a pretty crazy day yesterday i didn't do an update because i just was not interested in trading yesterday's price action but we will talk about it today explain why i thought it was a good idea for a day off and kind of where i think we are now so before we get into the price action i do want to announce that we do now have a new channel sponsor we have partnered with bitget and bitget can be used worldwide so if you're having trouble trading on an exchange account wherever you're located check out bitget if you use the link in the description of this video not only do you get 15 percent trading fee discount off all of your trades but you'll also get usdt sign up bonuses so be sure to check the link in the description of this video for that one now i have not actually even touched my chart before opening this but i want to talk about what happened last night i'm literally looking at this fresh with you guys and in order to kind of figure out where we're potentially going next we need to take a step back and look at what's already happened so far so that's what we're going to do first by looking back first it helps to educate you in case you see the same price action in the future you'll know what to do then we look forward into any potential trade setups if there is one so if you do like educational content be sure to smash that like button hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed and turn that bell notification to all so that you can be notified every time i upload a new video now let's talk about what i've put in squares right here because quite important if you've been watching this channel for a while you will know that we often have a weekend trap that leads into weekend consolidation and it's not worth trading we had a bit of a behavioral change this week or after us closed on friday we had one more hit to the upside now let's talk about this because this was a day trade setup that played out absolutely perfectly i think from my last update i'm trying to remember what it was because i think i did it on oh no i remember now i remember now now that i've seen this week I remember so my last update was saying if we came back to retest this candle right here it would be fine so we had mentioned this potential level here which I believe was the low of the day at the time for an entry then price had moved away if you didn't catch that for initial entry we were looking at this board meeting with the potential for it to come back down here because there were heat map orders at 25k at the time or just a breakout of the board meeting so we did get a wick touch I mean unless you had a limit order in there you would not have got picked up on that wick but essentially that wick did come back down into that zone and we moved away now this whole trade set up here I won't go into detail but it is called a 33 trade not sure if you'll find much about it if you google but essentially what it means is after a cycle has completed we bottom out with a w formation and then rise level one two and three has no pullbacks in between it's just consolidating sideways and so that's essentially what happened here we had rise one consolidate rise two consolidate rise three and in rise three you have three hits to the high that come at high volume so one two three green candles there so that counts as a 33 trade what follows a 33 trade is an extended period of consolidation which is what happened here and that leads you into usually a reversal but the reversal target is only the 200 EMA so what happened here because we had this extended period right here over the weekend this is the reversal that hit the 200 EMA target 
But was that a good trade to take? No, because the 200 EMA was way too close to price. And depending on where you entered the trade, there wasn't a good risk to reward on this trade. So that was kind of a, a bit of a bummer. It was the perfect trade setup. It did everything as it was meant to, but the short here just wasn't a tradable trade because of the target, which meant sit out. Now we did have longs here at 26.050 at the time. We'll redo that and have a look if they're still there on the heat maps in a second. But then yesterday was a really tricky day because once that trade setup was over, it's a complete restart and we have to assess the price action for what it is. Now we had two pretty big wicks here that created the initial low of the day. That was a sign there that the market maker didn't want lower prices than that, but they were inducing shorts down here, just like they did here. Those shorts right there, would have got stopped out here more shorts induced here so you got to remember when you have a long period of consolidation like that people who were taught to trade typical uh, retail they go and put a resistance line there right so there would be people who felt bearish as price was kind of in this zone looking for shorts and then anyone who shorts resistance didn't get a great trade didn't get a good risk reward out of it anyone who trades support breakdowns got trapped in a short that didn't go anywhere because we just came back up into the zone so it's a horrible day trading yesterday and I literally said in discord like good luck to you if you're gonna try and trade this like I'm glad to not have to be looking for a position because I'm still long from the W down here but then what happened from there the reason that this happened is because when price goes into consolidation for a long period of time the point of that is that the market maker is trying to accumulate contracts and induce retail into a position in the wrong direction especially if it happens at level three like it did right here if they shift out of that period of consolidation but price still goes nowhere like it did here, then what it usually means is that in this range here, they weren't able to accumulate as many contracts as they needed before they could make the big move out. So they widen the range to try and induce more traders. Now, when we have a look at what US did, US was completely erratic yesterday and the US market was closed. So you could put this down to Wales because it's irrational behavior. It's not following anything as it's meant to. But yeah, look what they did. They shot price right up. There were shorts here at 27,100 in the heat maps at the time. So shot price right up to just under that because it didn't hit it the first time, pulled away. And so I guess essentially they trapped these shorts right here because then price just came up gave us a higher high, went into that heat map short zone, and then has at this point in time reversed from there. So these shorts here would already be stopped out. That trade was no good. So terrible, terrible day. Just know that not all days are gonna give you great trading days. And when you see high volatility like this, or you see them widening the range like this, you know that they've got to do something really tricky because they're trying to get you to come to the table. As I always say, the market maker needs your commitment in order for them to fulfill their goals. So so learn to read when they're trying to get your commitment and it will really change the game for your trading. So now let's look at where we are now that we know all of that stuff and what the intention was. We've got our liquidation level still marked. The 26,890 was hit. So that's done. And on this week right here, the 27,169 was hit just as well, which at this point in time has created the initial high of the day. Now let's have a look where the heat map orders are currently and see if anything has changed. So when we have a look at Bitcoin, heat maps for Binance. Currently, we've got 1K shorts at 26,850. That's within the current four hour candle. So that means from where price is right now, they're trying to push price down. And then we've got some pretty high level shorts up here at 27,300 then 27,400. But we won't get there if these ones down here is successful. So just keep that in mind. It's possible that this here is pushing down for a pullback to then push through up to these higher levels for a strong stronger rejection because that's 1.5k there at 27,400. That's a really high level, whereas down here it's only 1k. But the thing is, if we're going to have a pullback, you want to see buy orders below price to, to stop that pullback. And we don't really have any high level buy orders anywhere. So we have to wait and see if that actually comes in. It might come in later. But what we do know right now is that the big traders are trying to short from 26,850. So where price is right now, they want lower prices. Let's readjust this. So that puts that just around here, which is a retest of the 20 EMA. And also this line here, which is, if I zoom out on it, it's the highest point of last week. So what has happened so far is 
This was a fake move that broke above the high and then came back within it, so it failed it. Then we came up, we broke above the high here again for a second time. We came back and retested it here. We held for a little while, but then we created a lower high and we've now failed it. So it is possible that this right here is an M formation. It's not a perfect one yet though, because I would have liked to see a stronger break of the 50 EMA. So in order to believe that we're gonna have more downside, I would want to see price now come up to retest the previous high of the week, which is at around 26,900. And also these short orders that are at 26,850. So we're talking $50 range here, but come up, retest that, fail it. Then I would be confident that we're going down for more levels today. If we can get back above the high of the week, however, then that short idea is not a thing. So we're really dancing on the 50 EMA right now on the 15 minute time frame. And as I'm filming this, we are literally in the gap between eight Asia has just ended and UK has just started. So if we're not going to get that retest and breakdown, if it doesn't look bearish, if price does get around to 26,850, then it's possible that this is the reset trade here after the 33 trade completed. And we've got a W, we've got a rise one with a horrible retrace, rise two, currently retrace, and there's another rise to come, which may take us up into these higher liquidation levels. It may take us up into these heat map short orders up here. So that's a possibility like you know I, I really don't like saying this way maybe this way maybe that way I really don't like saying it I like to be able to identify where we are in the model and say it, we should either go up or you do nothing like that's how I prefer to trade but we're just in a situation where the false move week beginning is now over Monday's finished the real trend should start today the real trend sometimes can get set in UK or US the problem is US yesterday was closed so it's not as easy as it should be but at the end of the day, what we have to go off right here is that high of the week. So the high of the week is the one to concentrate on today, a break and hold above it, continuation to the upside, a rejection underneath it, continuation to the downside. That's kind of how I feel about it. I hope that makes sense, guys. If it did, please smash that like button. It really does help me get these videos around the internet. And I'm a baby channel trying to grow. So appreciate all the help. Let's have a look at Ethereum, see if it's telling me anything different to Bitcoin. No, it's not. So ETH is just in the same range. See, this is the weekend range. It hasn't hit any of its liquidation levels yet. It came down here. This was something I put on Twitter yesterday, actually. We were in a price squeeze right here. In fact, you know what? Let me just show you the Twitter comment because easier to explain. So we had high level longs at 17.15 and high level shorts at 17.30. That meant, see here, this was the consolidation on ETH at the time that I posted it. So see this dotted line is the shorts. This one down here is the longs. We were in a price squeeze and we were holding price. So usually once one of those sides get released, we have a big move. And when we have a look at the follow through on Ethereum, that was right here where that happened. So this was the consolidation in that tweet. They broke out for a fake move to the upside and they broke through those shorts, but then we could not break the 800 EMA. So then they came back down for the other side and they came right to this liquidation level at 1696. And then they swiftly moved away from it. So again, very, very tricky in US last night wasn't tradable in my opinion, but was easy to identify what they were doing. What I do like about Ethereum that is different to the Bitcoin price action right now is I do like this vector candle right here after the last push to the upside. And the reason that I like that is because it makes it very, very clear for me to know where the high volume came in to make a decision. So now for Ethereum, price is either going to come back up here into the area of interest or reject underneath it or just fail to get back into this candle. And if it does, we would expect further downside. And that would make this right here, the M formation potentially. Or the second scenario is that now that that's created, price will get back above the 50 EMA. It will break through that, meaning it's also gonna break through the initial high of the day and yesterday's high of the day at around 17.50. It'll get break through all of that, hopefully give us a retest to change market structure. And then it's gonna come for these higher liquidation levels up here. So we've got 17.66, 17.84, and 
pretty big one at 1800 there are others higher but we'll just we'll just deal with this for the time being now we did have a high level shorts at 1780 yesterday let's see if they're still there they're sort of there they have tapered off a bit though so not as significant as yesterday but this is a new level that is significant at 1700 and 1700 would come back to yesterday's low of the day so that is interesting so yeah that's what i look for this is the key area this is between this candle is between 1738 to 1749 in my opinion there's not really anything to do unless price comes back into this zone it's kind of too hard to predict at this point in time all right guys i'm going to leave it there i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget if you are looking for an exchange to trade on check out the link below for bitget and also check out my trading toolkit because that will give you access to other exchanges other bonuses as well as information to the ttc courses and community if you want to come and learn this method in full. Have an amazing day. See you on the next one.